what you mean. <laughs> Welcome back to Horror Movies. In a few seconds, you're going to listen to a frightening tale narrated by me. Fear awaits you. Watch out and take care. In a small town, as the sun sets, a man, Sheriff Boyd, is seen ringing his bell. Everyone starts to rush home while the shops close for the night. Kenny Liu, the deputy sheriff is playing chess with his father Mr. Liu who has dementia, when Christy comes over to take Mr. Liu to the basement to rest. Sheriff makes sure that before dark, no one is outside. As he returns home, a board is hanging outside that is counting the days without incident. Sheriff touches a strange stone with carvings, hanging beside his door that apparently everyone in this town has. A young girl, Megan and her mother, Lauren, are waiting for the father of the family who still hasn't returned home. Being left with no choice, they close the doors and windows and cover them up. Megan's father, Frank, has been drinking all night and has passed out at his friend's place. He doesn't return home and this worries Lauren. The little girl heads upstairs and makes her bedtime prayer. As she finishes her prayer, suddenly she hears a sound from the window. A voice calls to her telling her that she is her grandma. As she opens the curtains of the window, an old woman is standing outside. Megan says that she is not her grandma and the old woman stays calm and smiles. She says she is very lonely and wants to come in. Lauren sees Megan near the window talking to the old woman and tells her not to open the window. However, it was already too late as the little girl opened the window and the old lady turned into a monster. In the next scene, the Matthews family, a family of four is seen driving an RV. It seems like a lovely family with a teenage daughter Julie, a little boy Ethan, a comforting mom Tabitha and a cool dad Jim. Julie tells Ethan a story that upsets him. Back in the town, Frank, who was the father of the little girl, shows up at his house only to find a lot of people surrounding it. Sheriff Boyd comes out of the house furious and asks why he wasn't home last night to which he says he was drunk and it got late. Enraged, he takes Frank to the upstairs room and shows him what horrors had unfolded the previous night. Frank cries at his loss as he looks at the lifeless bodies of his wife and daughter in pieces. Sheriff Boyd reminds him that it's a man's job to protect his family and orders Kenny, to lock him up. Father Cotri arrives devastated at the news and walks upstairs. Sheriff finds the stone with the carvings on the ground. He picks it up and puts it in his pocket. Back on the road, the Matthews family are enjoying the drive when suddenly they are stopped by a tree in the middle of the road. Being spooked by a lot of crows, the family turns back to a different road to find a way out. However, they don't realize that they have diverted from the main road. Sheriff heads towards the colony house where he meets with Donna, the head of the colony house who clearly says that Sheriff is not welcome there. Sheriff Boyd says he will leave after talking for some time. He goes to meet his son, Ellis, who lives in the colony house. Ellis is making a sketch of a beautiful girl in a white shirt, Fatima, holding a rose. Sheriff Boyd enters the room and Fatima quickly hugs Sheriff. She leaves them alone for some talk when the Sheriff relays the news of the deaths of Megan and Lauren. They were important for the whole community but Ellis, who is saddened, doesn't seem interested in any conversation with the sheriff. Sheriff Boyd leaves being disappointed. On the road, the Matthews family feel like they are lost as they can't find the highway anymore and there is no reception on the cell phone. Eventually, they enter the strange town where there is a graveside prayer going on. The people are shocked to see new faces. Sheriff Boyd tells everyone to not panic and mind their business as he and Kenny will handle the new people. He reminds everyone how they felt when they first arrived here as well. Jim finds the town sketchy and asks Tabitha to lock the doors of the RV. As he gets out to ask people for help, he carefully approaches them. However, no one answers him and passes by. Sheriff Boyd and Kenny come to talk with distressed Jim who is lost and can't seem to find a way to the highway. Sheriff takes a look at their RV and after asking if his family is with him as well, he points Jim in the direction of the highway. However, even after driving for some time, they come back to the same road to the town. Becoming really spooked, they asked a girl, Sarah, who was walking by but she didn't answer. They start on the road once again but this time they realize they are driving in circles. Suddenly Jim and Tabitha see another car driving toward them and decide to ask for help. The car was going in zigzags and speeding up, causing Jim to lose control and run off the road. The RV crashes and flips. Jim wakes up stuck due to a branch, unable to move. He calls on everyone to make sure everyone is alright but Ethan has hurt his leg and Tabitha is not waking up. In the other car, another individual, Toby, who has also been driving in circles crawls out. He gets out of his car with a head injury and shouts for help to Sheriff Boyd and Kenny who are installing spikes on the road. 
Sheriff Boyd and Kenny needed a reason to stop the family roaming around at night with all the creatures out there. Being surprised to see yet another new face, Sheriff Boyd runs to help the man's car and the family. He finds the black car that crashed and another man, Jade, who was standing outside with a confused mind. He looks like he is highly intoxicated but unharmed. Sheriff Boyd puts handcuffs on the man to keep him from walking around. He looks around for the crashed RV and finds Jim stuck and calling for help. Sheriff Boyd starts by calming everyone and making sure Tabitha is alive. On the other side, Father Katri, Christy, and Kenny find Ellis in the graveyard visiting Megan and Lauren. They all convince Ellis to join and go to help Sheriff Boyd in rescuing the people as it is about to get dark soon. Sheriff gets Julie out first but she is scared. Ellis and Kenny carry Tabitha out and she soon regains consciousness. Christy tells Sheriff that it will take another hour for her to stitch Ethan. Sheriff shows her the stone and tells her to stitch him up inside the RV. Sheriff Boyd talks to the family and asks them to head for town before it's dark. But Jim doesn't want to leave his family. Sheriff assures him that there is no time to explain and it's for the best. Meanwhile, Toby is in the clinic where Sarah is sitting beside him. She tells Toby that it's not his fault and puts a screwdriver through his throat. Meanwhile, Jim, Christy and Sheriff Boyd stay behind to help Ethan. The rest head back before dark. As Jim helps Christy with separating the metal rod from Ethan's leg, Sheriff Boyd makes sure to cover the window and lock the doors. When the sheriff hangs the stone by the door, Jim asks what he is doing as he is confused. Sheriff says he is trying his best to keep the RV safe. The car with the others stops in the middle of the road and they all make a run for the colony house before the dark completely sets in. In the RV, Sheriff is keeping a lookout and suggests keeping the sound down but Ethan goes into a shock and starts shaking. As the rain pours, Sheriff Boyd looks outside and sees a few people walking toward the RV. Ethan also stops shaking and Christy assures Jim that the boy will be fine. Suddenly some voices from the outside knock and offer help. Jim is relieved to hear voices and wants to let the people in for help but Sheriff warns him that these people are not what they sound like and are not here to help. Jim is confused by Sheriff's words and actions. On the other side, Tabitha and the others are still making a run for the colony house when Jade drops to the ground and hits his head. Father Katri and Kenny carry Jade to the house and knock on the door. They beg the colony house to open the door but no one opens it thinking they are not real people. Fatima says that Ellis is out there. Julie sees people outside surrounding them and one of them calls her by her name. Julie tries to talk to one of the boys when Kenny shoots. The boy doesn't die but instead keeps smiling. Seeing this horror, Julie panics in disbelief. Donna, the head of the colony house, convinces her people to not let the people outside die and open the door for them. As they enter the house, Donna orders Tabitha and Julie to be tied. On the RV, Jim asks why Sheriff said the voices weren't actual people. Sheriff says that they know those aren't real people but don't know what they actually are. He informs Jim that the stones with the carvings work as a talisman and keep those monsters away. They don't know why but they know it protects their houses as long as the doors and windows are shut. Tabitha and Julie are tied up in different rooms. Donna talks to Tabitha about what is happening. Victor, one of the oldest in the colony house, talks to Julie saying there have never been two cars before and it's special. Julie is scared to see Victor when Fatima comes to keep Julie company. Fatima takes Julie to Ellis's room that is filled with portraits. In the process, Fatima also tells Julie that those creatures try to get in the heads of people by whispering things and making people let them in. Julie asks why Fatima brought her in the room, Fatima says she wanted to show her that climbing high enough could open the eyes to what's beyond. Meantime, Christy is scared when she hears knocks and scratches on the walls of the RV and tries to see if the stone is still hanging correctly. Sheriff asks her to stay calm and not to let the creatures into her head. Back in the colony house, Kenny is furious at how they are treating Tabitha and Julie who are already scared and confused at what is happening to them. Ellis and Kenny fight about how the colony house treats people. In the RV, Christy, Sheriff and Jim together manage to pull the rod out of Ethan's legs. In the healthcare center, Toby has bled out. Sarah talks to someone hysterically saying that she can't do any of this anymore. In the colony house, Donna talks about her sister and how they notice the tree in the middle of the road and the crows as well. Tabitha is frustrated as she and her family have been through that same pattern. Donna continues with her story of how she encountered the creatures the first night she came to this town. The creatures were never scared of the guns and instead ripped open Donna's sister's face. She tells Tabitha that her family was lucky to have been found when there was still light. In the RV, Ethan talks about how he visited the Lake of Tears. 
He said he was in a room filled with drawings and they were all in there. It turns out, Victor, the old man from the colony house was also in a room filled with drawings and was making a crayon drawing about the accident. Sarah comes back home and takes a shower. Her brother, Nathan asks Sarah about dinner when she replies that she didn't have a choice. In the healthcare center, Gina, one of the caretakers, is tucking Mr. Lou to bed in the basement. She comes upstairs to check on Toby and finds him mutilated. She looks at the door and it's open. She hurriedly runs down to the basement and locks the door. Christy has a horrible dream and wakes up to see it's morning. The others from the colony house meet with Jim, Ethan, Sheriff, and Christy. Christy and Kenny hug tightly as they were expecting something worse than what has passed. Meanwhile, Sarah confesses to Nathan that she left the door of the healthcare open. She claims that she can hear their voices and they said it's the only way to save all of the people. Christy, Father Cotri and Kenny head towards the healthcare center and find the door open. As they walk towards the basement, they find the lifeless body of Gina. Kenny finds his father's body ripped into pieces. Kenny cuts wood in the forest as Sheriff Boyd finds him. He asks Sheriff if he ever noticed how the creatures never run but walk, smiling. The Matthews family decided to stay over at the colony house. Julie tells Ethan a funny story but he is staring at something. Ethan looks out the window and sees a mysterious boy in white. Another day begins, and Donna tries to explain the whole story to Jade who finally is in his right mind. He doesn't believe whatever he hears from Donna so he borrows a bicycle and goes to check for a way out himself. In the colony house, Ethan is still seeing the smiling boy in white and waves at him. The boy waves back. At the dinner, Kenny's mom, Mrs. Lou, is blaming herself for not being there for her husband. Sarah, who is reluctant, comes to help as Mrs. Lou breaks a glass and gets hurt. Donna explains the choosing ritual to Jim and Tabitha. Father Cotri takes them to show them around the house they will be living in. It turns out to be the house where Lauren and Megan used to live. When Tabitha asks what happened to the owners, Father Cotri explains the story of poor Megan and Lauren. After seeing the room where Megan and Lauren were found, Tabitha can't stay in the house anymore. Father Cotri also shows them the box which is the form of punishment in the town. Tabitha feels overwhelmed to hear that the father of the deceased mother and daughter, Frank will be put in the box for the first time as a form of punishment for negligence towards his family. At the diner, Jade is still in denial. He takes this whole situation as if it's an escape room. After having some food and talking with Kenny about the whole escape room thing, Jade walks out of the diner to find a way out of this town. Meanwhile, at the colony house, Victor is acting strange. When Ethan approaches to help him, Victor says that he is trying to figure out if the trees moved. Ethan also talks about the mysterious boy in white he sees around the colony house and Victor is surprised to hear about it. Julie finds Ethan talking to Victor and immediately calls him inside. As Ethan leaves, Victor tells him to say hello on Victor's behalf to the mysterious friend. In some part of the town, Jade finds a basement door and as he follows in, he finds a dead body that was screaming at him. He gets scared and falls to the ground where he finds a strange red symbol. As he stands up and looks back, nothing is there. Jade leaves thinking this is all his friend Toby's doing to scare him. Back in the town, the choosing ceremony begins where everyone has to choose to live in the town or in the colony house. Sheriff also tries to talk about Frank in the box punishment. Sheriff couldn't be cruel enough to put Frank in the box and let him go. However, Frank returns to the ceremony and says that he deserves the punishment and is willing to stand in the box. Jim, Tabitha and Ethan choose town while Julie chooses to rebel and stay with the colony house members. Jim and Tabitha are surprised at her decision but the choice is final. When Jade starts acting dumb, Sheriff kicks him out of the ceremony service. Kenny shows Jade the body of his friend Toby. Seeing his friend ready to be buried, Jade understands that whatever is happening is very real. As the sun sets, the town people gather to see Frank getting locked in the box. As the darkness starts to spread, they all settle into their houses, locking the doors and windows. Jade decides to stay with Kenny and Mrs. Lou. The Matthews family make home at their new house. Ethan asks about his sister to Tabitha and she assures that Julie is going to be alright. In the box, Frank is scared and looks around through the holes. He sees some people walking towards him. Suddenly, two creatures break into the box and get to him. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.